Since I have gained some experience with PVC and commercial style drip irrigation systems, many of you commented in the last video that you would like me to share my thoughts between the two. Well, in this video, I will outline a few things I see as pros and cons with both types of systems, as well as answering some of your questions near the end of the video. So let's jump right into it. Regarding costs for both types of drip systems, I used the last project where I installed drip irrigation around the perimeter of my garden as an example. I found that if I used PVC to water my plants, I would have spent roughly $71 on materials. I spent about $120 on materials using the commercial drip irrigation components. So looking at just the numbers, one would think PVC would be the better initial solution. However, stick around as there are many other factors to look into that we will discuss shortly. When creating drip locations, Using PVC is quite straightforward since all you need to do is use a power drill and a tiny drill bit. One of the downsides to using such a tiny drill bit is taking your time and ensuring you are not putting too much pressure on the drill bit to prevent breakage. Another downside to using PVC is that the plants you tend to water would need to be fairly close to the PVC pipe, else you would have to buy additional fittings to extend the pipe to the plant which can be more costly. On the other hand, commercial polytubing allows the same benefits as PVC and more when adding drip locations. With polytubing, instead of using a drill bit to create the drip hole, you can use the punch tool that will allow you to create a drip hole in a matter of seconds. You also have the option to either place your emitters in the primary poly tubing line, or you can also use micro tubing to branch off the primary line to reach plants further away. However, installing the micro tubing lines requires extra hardware such as the barb coupling and the emitter itself. Yet, these components are cheap, can be cleaned, are designed for Pacific flow rates, and can compensate for uneven terrain. There is clearly a difference when it comes to the special tools needed to install, maintain, or modify the two drip systems. With PVC at minimum, to cut the PVC pipe, you would need either PVC cutters, which I would recommend because they create a cleaner cut and make the overall process much easier. However, you can also use a manual or power saw if that is what you already have on hand. As mentioned before, you will also need access to a power drill and a few small 1 16th inch drill bits. Lastly, to create the manifold section of the PVC drip system, you will need to use PVC primer and solvent cement. When it comes to a commercial drip irrigation system, the only special tool you will need is the punch tool, which is only $1.20 for a standard punch tool, and I found it works just fine for a DIY drip system. Also, no special cutters are needed to cut the polytubing. You only need basic scissors, which you probably already have. The only negative I found while installing the commercial drip system was that it became a bit of a hassle to keep running back and forth into the house to get a fresh cup of hot water to ease the process of connecting the permalock fittings to the polytubing. Now, of course, I had to film plus install the system, so by the time I was ready to move on to the next fitting to install, my hot water had become much cooler. So this may not be an issue everyone runs in to and there may be other methods for heating the tubing but this was the recommended method on drip depot's website if you enjoy these types of videos let me know by pressing the like button and subscribing as it helps to inform others about this channel and it also motivates me to continue to spend my time making these videos the installation process is quite simple when installing the PVC drip system, even if you have little to no experience using solvent cement. In my opinion, the only time consuming tasks are having to draw the straight lines on the PVC pipes to make sure the drip holes are all aligned and marking and drilling out each hole. The commercial drip system is also quite simple to install once the poly tubing line has enough time to sit in the sun to become more flexible. Since most components are either hand tightened or inserted by hand, the installation process goes fairly quickly. Quickly. When it comes to sunlight exposure, PVC pipe tends to be more brittle after prolonged exposure, but studies have shown that this exposure would not affect the PVC's tensile strength. Additionally, to extend the life of the pipe, some recommend coating the pipe using latex-based paint. However, this adds to the overall cost of the system. On the other hand, commercial polytubing is UV resistant and under normal circumstances, I've read that it can have a life expectancy anywhere from 8 to 10 years. Now, I've also read that others that have used PVC drip irrigation systems, depending on how well they are cared for, the life expectancy of the materials is 10 to 12 years. Regarding the safest plastics to use within your garden, there are many mixed opinions regarding PVC that you will find online and all over YouTube. 
It is definitely something I'm still in the process of learning more about. However, most suggest commercial polytubing or high density polyethylene is the best choice since it is not known to transmit any harmful chemicals into the soil over time. When it comes to winter storage for my raised bed watering systems, from my experience, I would say the PVC drip system is probably the quickest to tear down and store away. Or if you are prepping the garden for the next season, it is perhaps the fastest to temporarily remove and reassemble. I know some people like a well organized garden and there are those who could care less. My opinion regarding cosmetics between the two system types is that the commercial tubing would blend in better due to its dark color and because most of the polytubing lines can be buried. My primary method for growing vegetables is using the square foot gardening technique which typically has 1 to 16 plants in a square. Because of how the water emits from the PVC drip holes, it is more effective than a commercial drip line because it ensures each square foot in the garden receives enough water. If I use the commercial drip line to accomplish the same task, I would likely have to use more material to cover each area that needed watering. I think a commercial based drip line is an excellent choice if the plants or vegetables are planted traditionally such as in a straight line like my strawberry plants. Here's a question from Hound Stuff. Good idea to compare. I'm curious about reliability and durability of the commercial system compared to yours. I'd also be interested in comparing some of the drip heads to some of their sprayers and other nozzles. Any issues with leaks at the joints or fittings, especially at the puncture points in the commercial system. From my experience so far, I have not had any leaking issues around the joints or fittings. In some cases, from what I've read online, a leak may occur from an irregular hole that was punched into the main line or the barbed fittings were not seated correctly. Here's another question from Richie Anderson. This may not be entirely on topic, but what size garden does drip become better than hand watering? The same for PVC versus commercial. What size does buying the more specialized product become more efficient than the DIY PVC? My personal opinion, which others may agree or disagree with, is that it becomes better than hand watering when you're starting to look for better ways to ease the process of watering your plants or your garden. Some people enjoy hand watering their plants, which is totally fine. However, I prefer to automate the things that seem repetitive or things that I may forget to do so that I can free up my time for other activities. So in summary, I think if you're running a commercial business or you're getting tired of having to hand water, it's probably time to look into another watering solution and drip irrigation has proven to be a reliable solution. Here's a final question I'll answer by Zach W. Can you do a mix of systems? Could I run PVC line but still put in a commercial spray tip or run a smaller commercial drip line off of a larger PVC? I personally have not done this, but I have come across videos of others pulling this concept off. However, a roll of polytubing is so cheap, if you have the means to, I would avoid mixing the two systems to avoid any leaking issues, for example, or any other issues that may occur. Overall, when it comes to both drip systems, I would lean more towards the commercial drip irrigation system due to the flexibility, the emitter and dripper options available, and since the polytubing has a track record of being a safer plastic type to use long term. I do see where PVC drip irrigation would seem to be the superior option such as with square foot gardening. However, I have come across another non-PVC based watering solution for square foot gardening that I plan on trying out in the future. Again, the information in this video is either my opinion from my current experience installing both systems or from reading articles I have seen online, but as I've mentioned a few times, I as well am still learning as I venture down this road of gardening, so be sure to always do your own research. But hopefully if you are new to drip irrigation, some of these points mentioned provided more insight on some things to consider. So if you found this video useful or think others might, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Until next time, thanks for watching.